Now, you had a nice story the last time you tried to kill me. What's it going to be this time? That's an easy one. You tried to kill me, and I shot you in self-defense. You want me dead to frame me for shooting Detective Beck. When you're the one who killed him, it's very good, Capelli. Wow. You figured that out all by yourself, huh, Morgan? I guess you're not as stupid as people think. Who put you up to this? Gerald is my chauffeur. He, he should have explained what we came here for. Oh, Gerald, do get up. Louise. I came to thank you, Courtney. Skippy and I surely would have perished in that fire if you hadn't saved us. Oh, anybody would have done the same. Oh, no, my dear. You risked your life to save me and Skippy, too. It was very brave and selfless of you. Oh, I'm glad that I could help. My dear, you were absolutely wonderful, and I can't thank you enough. <laughs> My late husband always said, money's a good place to start. You are about to become a very wealthy young woman. Carly? <laughs> what do you think? You're beautiful as always. Oh, well, that's very diplomatic. Quite a change. I just needed one. New hair. New beginning. I like it. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, look, 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 look. Look at all this stuff I got the boys. Look, I got this for Michael. He's going to freak out. It does these, these like, dives and loops. And, and it, how many toys did you does. buy? Enough to spoil them rot. And look at all this. God, I miss them so much. Carly. It's not going to be as easy as you think. What's Sonny going to do? I have a legal document granting me temporary custody. The police are going to meet me, and they're going to go to the penthouse with me to make sure that Sonny gives me the kids. <laughs> Can I speak with you alone? everything okay yeah yeah I, I i moved on my boat this morning i got the cabin all set up and it's it's really comfortable there good 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 um you, do, you, do you need something <laughs> i just I, I wanted to come by to see how you were doing oh to see how your, well that's fine was. yeah i mean knees good you know i've got this cut and, but everything cut ouch yeah. who are you and why are you touching my daddy's face? and ordering them to leave. I asked to speak to Carly. Lorenzo's right. Maybe I don't want to speak with you. How can you just come in here and expect a little heart-to-heart -heart chat? I came to make peace. You saved my life, and I would prefer to do it without an audience. Yeah, I imagine I make you uncomfortable being the brother of the man you murdered. You know, it still bothers my niece. You've never paid for killing her father. And I tell her not to worry. But sooner or later, you will. I'll be back there and pick you up. Did you tell him? 
Lorenzo? Sonny, did you tell Sonny that he was Christina's father? Uh, you hope not, don't you? There's a little girl's life at stake. He'll take her from me and he doesn't give a damn about my parental rights. I'll give you anything. I don't want anything from you, Alexis. You have nothing to gain by doing this, Connor. Okay, absolutely nothing Alexis, I'm going to give you a little hint here. You want a favor, you say, please. Please. Then I will be quiet for now. And you can have your precious daughter all to yourself. But just remember, Alexis, I have a very, very bad temper. And I do not appreciate the way that you look down on me. So be nice, Alexis. Otherwise, Christina will be calling Sonny Daddy before you know it. Do you understand? Perfectly. This is my friend, Sam McCall. Hi. Your daddy and I were, were in that big fire together. Did you see it on TV? It was really scary. Yes. Well, those, those firemen, they saved lots of people's lives. You know, they're really big heroes. Is she sting? She just came to visit, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I better go finish my homework. I went, uh, well, yeah. Our kids are. I don't, I don't, I don't want, I, I want Michael to know that, we, that we're friends, you know, and I don't want to know that anything's going on between us. He's had a lot to deal with. How's it going with you and Carly? Uh, and nothing's changed. She wants to take my boys away. She's not gonna have him. So you admit that your negligence contributed to the hotel fire? You're trying to confuse him. I am trying to ascertain what he knew and when. My grandfather has been through a fire, a heart attack, and a major operation. He's in a weakened state. It's so weakened that he doesn't remember whether his hotel was up to code? Hell yes, that hotel was up to code. We had it inspected when we purchased it. That was, uh, that was what, two years ago. EMQ mm. bought the hotel in 91. Okay, let's forget about when the hotel was, was bought or not. You were informed. If you want to security, question him any further, he knew that the hotel was not up warrant. to code. I have, a, I have a statement from the building superintendent. You will also need an affidavit from a surgeon stating that he's strong enough to undergo an interrogation. Oh, please, he's not senile. He's putting on an act. I can see that. The jury will, too. You don't belong in this house. I gave Nicholas this house. I bought it for him as a Christmas present. You're the one that doesn't belong here. No, oh, you were a tragic mistake for Nicholas. You brought him nothing but pain. And you have killed Nicholas me. and I loved each other. No, oh, it was my grandson's infatuation with you that cost him his life. You should have died. You should have bled to death. Mom wondered how that tourniquet came loose, but you know, don't you? If not for you, Nicholas could have gotten down that stairwell or escaped on the helicopter. He would be alive now. Get away from her. I have been blessed with great financial freedom all my life. This check is, is to thank you for saving me and Skippy. It's too much. I have given to many worthy causes, but I can't think of any cause worthier than you. You are a true heroine. <laughs> You're giving me way too much credit. Don't be modest. You acted with bravery and selflessness. And I want to reward you for it. This is unbelievably generous of you. It is, Louise, but I can't accept it. Take out your gun very slowly okay. and drop it on the ground. I should ask you something. You risked your life. You ran into a burning building to kill Detective Beck. Why'd you do it, Capelli? Because I had no choice. Beck was a straight arrow. He helped get evidence against Scott Baldwin, and eventually, 
That evidence was going to incriminate me. So I had to shut Beck up. Before he could turn me in for corruption and misconduct. Uh, hey, I had no use for Beck either. You expect me to believe we're on the same side? You did what you had to do. It's not my business. No! No! If you had died in that fire like you were supposed to, you would be blamed for Beck's death. And this would all be over. Instead, I'm going to have to kill you myself before you kill me. Way downstairs. I think this is going to be hard enough on Sunny without having to see you. All right. I don't want him to use me as an excuse to fight the court order. I'll make sure that Sunny hands Michael and Morgan over. I'll wait for you in the lobby. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? Ready as a liver pee. Okay, Sunny is expecting me. Sweet. Sunny? This here is a personal matter. I would like to handle it privately. You, me, and a cop? Well, Lucky is family, and he knows how difficult this is going to be for Michael. Sam, do you mind? She's not going to go anywhere. Nicholas has every intention of Emily living in this home. Oh, you have no say in this, Natasha. I'm the executor of this estate, which gives me full authority to carry out his wishes. His first is that you be disowned. How like you to usurp Nicholas's position now that he's dead? You've never had power, so you have to use his. The only power the Cassadines ever had was based on lies and treachery. Nicholas was the one good thing in a family of maggots incapable of any genuine emotion. Oh, and no one ever bestowed any emotion on you because you were the poor little way that no one could love. Nicholas was far superior to you in every way. Nicholas was superior to every Cassadine that came before him. Stavros and Migos were hateful. Stefan had a glimmer of hope until you destroyed it with your constant barrage of cruelty. Nicholas despised all of you. Oh, you have no idea how Nicholas felt. I know that Nicholas felt that Emily was the one loving thing that ever happened to him. If anyone has any right to be in this home, it's Emily. And you, madam, have no authority to force her out. Well, Emily is a disgrace. A disgrace to Nicholas's memory, and I don't want her in this house. I find it totally unacceptable. I'm sorry that you had to hear that. Well, the hardest part was talking about Nicholas in the past tense. <laughs> Why is it so easy for you to believe that he's gone? Maybe you're, you're already fighting over his estate and what he would have wanted and who will live where. <laughs> they haven't even found a body yet. I meant what I said. You're welcome to stay here as long as you like. Oh, I'll just stay long enough to say a final goodbye to Nicholas. Why don't you give some credit where it's due? I managed to stonewall Lansing. He didn't buy your non compass mentis act for a minute. He was bluffing. He was trying to trip me up. And he will if you let your pride get in the way. I was completely in control. If there'd been a jury present, they would have thought you were faking it. So what do you want me to do? You want me to start singing nursery rhymes? Pretend it's, it's 1943? No, I have my dignity. Edward, we're pleading diminished capacity. You need to be willing to look like a fool no matter what oh, no, the cost. No. Play this right and Lansing's suspicions won't matter. The plea will work and the Quartermains will be free. But if you don't, the family will be devastated by lawsuits. You need to think about this. The family's future is in your hands. If your father is declared legally incompetent, the rest just falls into place. You'll be in a position to get exactly what you want. Poor daddy. It is tragic to see a once vital and intelligent man deteriorate. But 
We have to face the fact he's senile. I don't feel right accepting this much money. I won't take no for an answer. It is yours, dear. Louise, anyone would have saved you in that fire. Oh, no, my dear. I'm sure too many people would have been concerned with their own safety in the fire rather than stop to help me. But you did, and you saved me and my dog. I was just there by coincidence. There are no coincidences. Things are meant to happen. I had a, a lovely daughter, Jessica. She was just about your age. She died. Oh, I'm sorry. She never had a chance to enjoy her wealth. Well, you, you could donate this to one of her charities. Oh, I have donated millions. Louise, I, 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 this is such a generous offer, and I appreciate it, but I... Then accept the money. Think of it as an act of kindness to, to help me heal from the death of my daughter, Jessica. Ten million dollars. Well... Think of the things you can do with it. You and your husband that you were so anxious to save during the fire. Um, Jason and I aren't together anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then uh, think of all the opportunities it would give you to do new things. There is one other part of my gift to you. Lansing already thinks you tried to kill me in the hotel fire. He's not gonna buy that you shot me in self-defense. Your only way out of this is to walk away now. And leave you alive to turn me in for killing Beck? No. I, I don't give a damn that you killed another cop. I left you to burn to death. You expect me to believe that a guy like you is just gonna forgive hey, and forget. Hey, hey, Beck, was my was a problem for me. You did me a favor. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm not risking my life on it. You kill me and Sonny will hunt you down. You can run, you can hide, you can leave the country, change your identity. It's not going to matter because Sonny's not going to rest until you're dead. Ellie, drop the weapon! Back away, cover him. Put your hands on your head. Secure that weapon. He's dead. You heard his confession. It's quick thinking of you to use your cell phone. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say, whoa, 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 Kevin, hold it, will. Hold it, hold it. There's, there's no need to arrest him. He shot Capelli. Self-defense. I, um, I... I don't know how to thank you. I'm the one who's trying to thank you, my dear. Well, it's all just a little overwhelming. Life put a challenge in front of you during that fire. Now you're facing a different kind of challenge. I'm sure you'll handle it with the same grace and courage. I never really cared much about money. They say money can't buy you happiness. That's true. But a whole world of possibilities is open to you now. And I can't think of anyone who deserves it more. Gerald, I'm ready to go home. I still can't quite believe it. I do believe it. You saved my life, and I'm giving you a gift. Yeah, but it's more than I ever imagined. Enjoy it, dear, and know that I am eternally grateful. Me too. Take care, Courtney. I'll be in touch. You, uh, you can handle the legal maneuvering. I'll take care of the rest. Just keep your wits about you. No. Oh, you want me to put on a convincing show that I've lost my wits, huh? All right. I'll convince them that I'm nothing but a, a doddering old incompetent. Oh, Tracy. Hello, Daddy. How nice to see you again. How long have you been back in town? Eddie, I've been home for months. Oh, well, thank God you're here. You know something? Those men were saying that I was sitting on top of a building playing with matches. 
And that awful new DA has accused me of, of burning the hospital. He's talking about the Port Charles Hotel. As I said, my father is not in his right mind. Thank you. My father is too confused to assume his responsibilities. These papers relieve him of the burden and put me in charge. I'm just going over some of Nicholas's papers. He never had a chance to change his will. What does that mean? It means that the Cassidy estate, or what's ever left of it, is being equally divided between Christina and Leslie Lou. <laughs> Luke and Helena are both gonna hate that. Well, finally, they have something in common. Will there be enough money to send the girls to college? I obviously had planned to send Christina to college myself, but it was very generous of Nicholas to provide for her. He also uh, left a trust to cover Laura's medical expenses so that she'll be able to remain in her present facility. You bought him this house. I know he wants you to have it, and if you want it, it's yours. No, I will do whatever. No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't need money. <laughs> if the Quartermains went bankrupt tomorrow, Jason would give me anything I wanted. He has more money than he needs, and he never spends it on anything anyway. Yeah, I knew it would be him. Excuse me. Coming out of that hotel. They pulled all the firefighters out and they said that, uh, they said anyone left in that building was, was dead. And I kept explaining that, that Nicholas and Jason were still in there, but no one would listen. And then I saw someone through the smoke and I wanted it to be Nicholas, but I knew, even before Courtney ran to him, I knew that it was Jason and that that only one of them could live. And uh, Courtney ran to him and he was holding her so tightly and, uh, and I was screaming inside because I knew that, that Nicholas would never hold me again. I assume that you want to present a loving and united front for our children. Mm, yes, I do. So then why does she need to be here? Why does a cop need to be here? Look, I don't want a confrontation with you, Listen, Sonny. Can we... Carly's been granted temporary custody of the boys. For this sake, can we just make this as painless as possible? Fine by me. Crazy, and you know it. Daddy, calm down. Listen, you and Justice cooked up this whole diminished capacity charade right in this room. I was suspicious of your motives right from the start, but you kept assuring me that your only interest was in protecting me and the family. It is, Daddy. Your senility. I am not senile, Dad, damn it. You've just suffered a major heart attack. The doctor told you to avoid any stress. Daddy, you have been slowly deteriorating. No. It's forcing me to take drastic action to protect the family. This document gives me power of attorney and complete control over ELQ and all the family's holdings. I'm sorry. I just don't see any other option. You won't get away with this, Tracy. She already has. This action is legal and enforceable. Nothing you can do about it. First of all, you never have to thank me for that. And second, I'm not even sure that it was a conscious decision. <laughs> the first time I saw Nicholas, <laughs> when I was the world's geekiest teenager, <laughs> 
and he was uh, he was charming and polite and and handsome mm -hmm. and and still so incredibly kind I think I knew right then that I'd love him forever and Nicholas <laughs> he thought that it was it was just a crush and for a while I did But I know now that it was love. And it always will be. I think you loved him just right, Emily. I think you loved him selflessly, and I think you were the only one who ever did that for him. <laughs> Stefan and Elena. All I cared about was controlling him, and I don't think that I did the right thing either. Because I kept my distance and left him alone and thought that he would come to me if he needed me, and I knew very well that he never asked anybody for anything. You did it just right, Emily. You turned a hopeless crush into something real, and you became his only true love. <laughs> And he became yours. He loved you. He did. Truly and deeply. Okay, I'll, I'll bring Michael and Morgan over when they're ready. I'm already here. I'll take yeah, them with me. Yeah, hasn't finished packing their bags. Well, then I'll wait. You don't trust me? Sonny, I don't want to take any chances. Yeah, and I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I don't want you to take the boys. But I'll do what I got to do. But it, it, it's important that we make it okay for them. That is what I am trying to do. No, it's not, because if you if you come here and take them away from their home, it's gonna send the wrong message, like we're in some kind of tug of war. I'll just go upstairs, I'll say, tell Michael that I love him, and then he and Morgan are gonna be happy with you. Well, t just bring Michael down here and we can tell him you're together. You're upset, I'm upset. We don't, we, you wanna, you know, we don't want Michael to see us, uh, see another fight. Tell you what, there's no, there's no uh, perfect answer here. This is a big step for the boys. We have to, you know, we only got one chance to make it right. You don't have to go along. You're legally entitled to take the boys now. Sonny, I am trusting you to do the right thing. I will be waiting at home. Now, that is not what I thought you would do. Really? Yeah, really. I mean, your wife comes barging in here demanding you to hand over the kids, and, and you say, sure. Honey, let's be civilized about this. I, I thought you would just, I don't know, slam the door in her face. I already did that. It didn't work. Okay. Well, I suppose you just... You gotta say goodbye, right? Wait a minute, wait. There's something I need you to do. I'm gonna need a statement from you. That Capelli tried to kill you twice, once during the hotel fire, and then once you did Yeah, I want to speak to him. Is that your automatic response every time a law enforcement person has got to ask you a question Pretty or make much, a comment? Pretty much, Rick. Will you try to grasp this? I'm on your side, Jason. Capelli was a dirty cop. He was under investigation for months. He was about to be exposed. And thanks to you, I just overheard that he, he killed a cop in cold blood. He tried to gun you down. Capelli got what he deserved. All I'm asking from you is a statement. No, all you so that want... So can close the fire. All you want is for me to owe you... Oh, you stopped a cop from arresting me and I'm supposed to trust you now? Look, I'm just trying to do my job, Jason. It just so happens on this rare occasion, you were the victim instead of the perpetrator. You'll get my statement. Why are you making this so difficult? Because I know you, Rick. I know how you work. You're sick. 
You're a liar. They can give you an office at the, at the city hall and call you DA, but I know the truth. You still want to take Sonny down. You know what? When I do put you and Sonny away, it's not going to be because I manufactured something. Jason, and when I get a conviction, I will make it stick. You should have arrested me while you had the chance. Well, well. Justice Ward. <sighs> Jen McNeil. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you're not thrilled to see me? I can't imagine. Could it be that you were second in your law class? It's an impressive credential. Except for when you're dealing with the woman who was number one. Who, by sheer coincidence, just happened to be sleeping with a contract law professor. Oh, I'll see. There's the justice I know. Taking his digs wherever he can get them. You realize you're fighting a losing battle with this Quartermain case. Was that supposed to scare me off? I'm just stating the facts. Oh, okay, well, here's one for you. If you don't go along with Tracy, there may not be a quarter main fortune to save. The family could be facing millions in lawsuits due to Edward's negligence in the hotel fire. So think about it, Justice. There's really only one way to win. Now that's what I don't like about you, Jen. You're brilliant, but you have no creativity. You have no idea how to work the unexpected angle. <laughs> and you do? Watch me. Dr. Ralston, please call us five seven. What do you think will happen to this place? I have no idea. Do you think they'll tear it down? I certainly hope so. This house has brought nothing but unhappiness to everyone who's ever lived in it. Nicholas and I are going to change that. I'm sorry, Emily. That was very insensitive. No, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> I always thought this was an ugly, gloomy old place. <laughs> Until, until the night of the Bacchanalia, when there were flowers everywhere and, and the ballroom was all lit up, and for a little while it was magic. Maybe that's the lesson. Magic doesn't last in this place. Time enough for a first dance, maybe. Time enough to fall in love, and then the magic fades. There's no happily ever after. Okay, I think I'm the one that should apologize here. I'm... <laughs> for what? I'm not going to feel sorry for myself, and um, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life looking back. I know you won't. Is it all right if I... If I look in that desk, I think there's some pictures. Take anything you want. Take it all. Lucky, thank you. Thank you for coming with me. For all the good it did. No, Sonny needed to know that I was willing to involve the police. And, um, will you stay till he brings the kids? Sure. Let me put a call in the station. Thanks. Oh, look at all the toys. <laughs> it's gonna be good. How do you show you this? This this one. It's so cute. Um. It, it, it jingles, see, and Morgan's gonna love it because he can kick it, and, and, and it's, he's gonna like it. And I got um, Michael's favorite cereal. It's in the kitchen, ahead, so when he can come, he can feel like he's at home. You're a great mother. Sonny doesn't think so. And he's not intimidated by court orders. 
think he's double-crossing you? I hope not. I hope he realized it would be the worst thing he could do to our children. Letitia, hurry up. We gotta go. Um, what are you doing? Michael's gone. Hospital is on fire. Catch up on all the back alley brawls of Port Charles this weekend. How long have you been cheating on Sonny? I slept with Lorenzo last night. Trust me, it will not be the last. Hope you guys enjoyed too. Because you're dead to me. Watch Monday through Friday's episodes every Sunday starting at 1, only on SoapNet. The new way to watch soaps. to meet Meyer. Hey, you remember that? Uncle, uh, Uncle Jason. Michael, what, what are you doing out here all alone? I have to find Mommy. Morgan and I are leaving, but I have to say goodbye. What are you doing here? Hi. Sonny asked me to give you a message. The boys, they're going to stay with him. Kidnap the kids. I knew it. He probably has them in the car already. He's probably leaving town I'm right now. To check it down. No, it is too late for that. You get an APB out on Sonny and arrest this bitch for conspiracy to kidnap my kids. If two kids are too much for you to handle, you need to let me know. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I thought Michael. No, was I don't care what you thought. You should know where Michael is at all times. Now he's running around looking for Carly. He doesn't know where she's staying. What if Alcazar grabs him? Michael. Where? Kelly's. Okay, okay. Uh, do me a favor. You and Michael go straight to the airport. Morgan and I will meet you there. Deliberately provoking her. Just gonna show how she is the unfit mother. The way he's treating Carly right now, you're next. They're leaving the country. Sonny is on his way to the airport with the kids right now. You know what I want you to do? That's one of these Carly. straitjacket and take me away. I'm never going to stop believing in you again. 
was afraid you died when the roof collapsed. When the helicopter cleared the building, I ran for the stairs. It was really dark and smoky. And I, I kept losing my balance. I kept falling. And my hands, they were burning from touching the hot metal, but I didn't even notice. All I kept thinking about was your face. When you were so sick last summer, and how hard you had to fight. You... You wouldn't let yourself die. You loved me too much. And I had to love you like that. Strange in a way. When you don't think about anything else. When you just concentrate on... When you just concentrate on, I, I love my Emily. And I have to live for her. When you just concentrate on that, everything else just fades away. <laughs> Jason, what happened to Jason? Did he make it out? The firefighters said that, that no one was left alive in the building, and then I saw someone through the, the smoke, and it, it felt like I'd lived my whole life in that one second when I hoped it was you. And then Jason walked out. <laughs> and he's my brother, and I love him, and now I can be completely grateful that he lived, because he lived too. <laughs> Did he tell you that I cut through his handcuffs with a fire axe. And he saved his life. <laughs> I caused the gas explosion that nearly killed us. Another important reminder that I need to stay away from manual labor at all times. <laughs> <laughs> what it feels like to breathe the air or see the stars. Don't touch somebody's face. Until it, until it gets taken away from it. safe and so are the two of you and that's all that really matters at this point i almost had to probate your will by the way thank you for providing for christina oh you're welcome and my favorite part was when you disinherited elena <laughs> that's my pleasure what what cameron lewis died in the fire and xander's disappeared what do you you mean he wasn't in the basement that apparently was scott baldwin if Sandra got away, he's probably in Canada by now. Yeah. Well, that, that's kind of kind of a lot to take in. I mean, I, I thought Xander burned to death because of me. Whatever happened to Sander is not your fault. I'm sorry. I know you cared a lot about him. Cameron as well. I did. I should have told him so. But I guess it's too late for that now. I'm sorry. I would much rather focus on you and how nice it is to see your face. Mm -hmm. Thanks, two of us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Emily is way too nice and too in love with you to tell you that you smell 
and that you're very dirty, and I don't want you to get anything on the furniture oh. because you can't <laughs> afford to reupholster it. Take a shower. Okay. You don't go anywhere. Not a chance. I'm almost afraid to let him out of my sight. I can see the eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Alexis, for your your kindness and your support. I know I've been a basket case. No, Emily. A basket case is someone who gets so caught up in their own grief and fear that they blurt out things that shouldn't be said. You aren't even remotely close to being a basket case. That you're that you're worried, grandmother, but I'm I'm all I'm all right, really. Oh, it felt like a cosmic joke that you would die in a fire caused by someone else's negligence. After everything I did to save you. And yet here you are. The strongest of the strong. Oh, my perfect grandson. Uh, don't get carried away, okay? I didn't turn into a superhero in there. I was lucky enough to end up under a steel beam, which protected me instead of crushing me. Oh, you've always been far too modest. You weren't fated to die. You were meant to live out your legacy. To be the greatest Cassidyne of all. I'm... glad that you survived the fire as well. As much as I've hated you at times, I never really wanted you dead. I know that. And I know that on some level you've always understood my devotion Doesn't to mean I accept or condone all the terrible things you've done. All I'm saying is that maybe, maybe this fire is a chance for us to start over, to connect as a, as a, as a family. I, not that that's even possible. Believe me, I have my doubts about your motivation. Oh, Nicholas, it is more than possible. And I have wonderful news. I have found a way to secure your future. Hello, Helena. I'm sure you're as relieved as the rest of us to see that Nicholas is home safe. Yes, I was, uh, I was just telling Grandmother here that maybe this is a chance for all of us to start over. You think? I'm willing to try. And so will I, for Nicholas's sake. Emily, I can see how much you love my grandson, and it's quite obvious how much he loves you. That's why I'm asking you, I'm beseeching you. Break this engagement and walk out of Nicholas's life forever. Emily, you have fallen in love with a Cassidy man. Easy to do, but hard to live with. Now, to them, love is not a pretty sentimental emotion. It's, it's an all-consuming passion. A, well, it's a kind of madness. You're being a bit histrionic there, don't you think? No, you know I'm right. Nicholas, look at Stavros and Stefan. They were all consumed by their obsession for Laura. And they destroyed her. They shattered her mind. And Laura was fortunate she managed to walk out with her life. Alexis's mother did not. Because of you! No. No, because she loved Nikos. Emily, loving Nicholas will ruin your life in the end. And in turn, it will destroy his life. Now, you don't want that, I know. So do the right thing. Let Nicholas go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wait, 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 sorry. I would like to report a missing person. My husband, Rick Lansing. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, I'll call you back. I'm sorry, sweetheart. It's just, it's been really crazy since Scott died. I'm, I'm trying to pick up the slack on all of his active cases. I know. Could, do you think you can come to dinner with me just for an hour, please? Uh, sorry to interrupt. I just received this. You've got to see it right away. Why? What is it? Well, for one thing, it explains a lot about what happened during the fire. Hi, it's 
Spencer, you might want to pour yourself a stiff one because, uh, as you can see, I'm alive and well. Hey, I didn't know you were volunteering tonight. I'm not. I came to see you. I need to borrow some money. I spent everything I have on the hotel. Okay. This is really important, Georgie. Dr. I'm gonna go after Xander. Xander? Yeah, he said he was gonna run away to Canada. I'm gonna go find him. Xander probably died in the fire. No, Scott Baldwin's body was found in the basement, which means Xander got away. He said he was headed for a town called Kirbyville. I mean, there's a bridge right at the border there. Look, you barely know the guy, Maxie. I know him better than you think. The night of the winter formal, he was hiding in my room. You hid Xander from the cops in our house? He didn't mean to hurt anyone. He was desperate. He'd been framed. He told you this. Rick Lansing framed him, Georgie. Xander's innocent. Look, even if he got out, he probably... Xander has a bullet wound in his leg right now. Okay, and I'm the only one that can help him. I've emptied my savings account, but I can't do anything without your help. Maxie, this is crazy. Xander's in trouble right now, and I'm the only friend that he has. Please, Georgie, will you help me get to Xander? You're probably wondering, Spencer, why I would fake my own debt and leave the glory of the DA's office. Well, it turns out that Internal Affairs had been investigating me, and they had been for some time. I guess they weren't uh, too pleased with some of my shenanigans. Of course, I was just trying to bring you criminals to justice. So I figured, why go to jail? Time to leave town. I don't like jail the way you do. Was he really being investigated? So I found that if he was, he's guilty as hell, basement, and he you can't face the music. The dental records around. Well, you know how that kind of stuff works, huh, Spencer? Now, the bad news is the Blackthorn treasure. I thought that that was going to finance my travels out there, but it was stolen right out from under my nose. I hope it wasn't you that stole it. Why is he confessing all this now? One reason. Me. So, I figure I'm going to take the kid on a trip. Sail the seven seas, hang out in the Caribbean. Yeah, because um, she kind of grew up while I wasn't looking. That's happening to you too, Spencer, with your kids. But you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to drop in on Laura. I know how much she loves the ocean. Maybe she'll come with me. So why don't you stew on that, huh? <laughs> Have you checked on your wife? I called the hospital. They've agreed to double the security around her. He's, he's probably bluffing her. But I'll tell you this, if he gets within five feet of my wife, that bastard will be dead. For real. Officer, officer, I need for you to get this to forensics, have them go over every inch of it. We also need to order another autopsy on the body that was ID'd as Scott Baldwin's. Oh, boy. This is crazy. I mean, if, if Scott got out of that fire alive, then... Well, then the body that was found in the basement is probably Xander's. Don't you ever get tired of manipulating people? I am trying to help you both. Nicholas has never brought me anything but happiness. And now you you want him to believe that he's he's cursed? Of course not. And Nicholas knows that what I'm stating is true. The Cassidines often love to the point of madness. And they very often destroy the one that they most want to save. Well, Prince Nikolai never hurt Constance. Their love only made them stronger. It's the same with me and Nicholas. Oh, I knew you wouldn't understand. But Nicholas does. Oh, Nicholas, you know I love you. And it's obvious that you love this girl. But the one thing that you will not be able to survive is her destruction. Now, if you continue this relationship, you will both be destroyed. never stops. <laughs> Everything she said is true. I warned you about this. No one in your family actually went crazy because of love. Did, 
My mother's in a hospital, Emily, remember? Nicholas, Laura had a traumatic experience in her past. That's the reason she's sick. It has nothing to do with stuff on her Stavros. <laughs> I mean, look, 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 look at Helena. She's indestructible. <laughs> Why didn't your grandfather's love destroy her? But it did. Helena's psychotic. She, she may not wander around talking to herself or sit staring at a wall all day like my mother, but she's definitely insane. Well, we're different. You sure about that? You willing to bet your life on it, your sanity? Don't you even think about leaving me for my own good, Nicholas. I'd only come after you anyway. We love each other, and there is nothing wrong or destructive about that. We're going to live a long and happy life together. This is a really bad idea. Yeah, well, there's no way that you're going to stop me, okay? You guys got to see this. It's, it's about the fire. Thank you all for coming. I have a very brief statement. Following the reported death of former DA Scott Baldwin, I have been named acting district attorney. It has now become a matter of public record that Mr. Baldwin was under investigation for extortion and flagrant misuse of a public office. That being said, however, new evidence has come to light to show that Mr. Baldwin is indeed alive and well, and he has fled the state. He did not die during the fire at the Port Charles Hotel, as was previously reported. The body that was found in the electrical utility room was, uh, oh, was wrongly identified. That body belongs to wanted fugitive Xander Smith, who has now officially been declared dead. Mr. Lansing, and please. No, there, there's got to be a mistake. Xander, Xander can't be dead. No, no, he can't be. Do you... Do you ever get scared by how much we love each other? I was... When I left you on the roof during the fire. As we were pulling away, I was sure that if you didn't make it, I wasn't going to either. Because, because you know, love that strong can, it can overwhelm reason. It, it can turn into something no, 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 dark. No, listen, that's yes. Elena talking. Don't listen. You're not some obsessed Cassidyne prince. You're the man I love. Hmm. It's, it's good to hear your voice too. Yeah, I, I would I would have come to see him before, but I what? When? No, no, no. It's okay. I needed an hour. Th thanks for calling. What is it? Sanders' body's been identified. He was the one they found out in the utility room. Which means I killed him after all. No, it, it, it was an accident. Em Emily, I locked him in the room. He was trapped when the fire started. I have to turn myself in. Maxie, you did everything you could for Xander. I did everything wrong. I left him in a room where he burned to death. Maxie, that was not your fault. No, Xander, Xander would still be alive. If I had only told Mac where he was, if I had been honest. Lies are not the easy way out. They get people killed. We'll go after her together, okay? Thank you. But I need to go after her alone. Scott Baldwin took advantage of the people of Port Charles. I will do everything in my power to make sure that he's brought to justice. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Oh, God, lucky I was so happy when we heard you were okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> Emily told me how much you were how much you were helping her. I, I, oh. I thank you for that. It's no problem. So, are you guys here about Xander? Or? Yeah, Lucky told us. It's pretty horrible, isn't it? I wish I could have done something if I had just. Emily, been... Emily, please, please don't start blaming yourself. Okay, I'm responsible for this. It's. I'm here. Nicholas. Glad to see that you're okay. Thank you. Listen, I, I'm sorry that you were left in the building. The fire chief said that it, he was too unsafe for his men to go back in there. It's, it's okay. Searching. It's okay. I understand. Anyway, um, I'm actually here about Xander. Uh, if I hadn't locked him in the basement, he, he would still be alive today. You locked Xander in that basement. You left him to burn to death. Maxie. Xander and I had a fight. I knocked him out, locked him in the basement, and then went to go call the police. He was already unconscious. Why did you have to lock him in? To, to keep him from running. The fire hadn't started yet. I never meant for him to die. Yeah. Why should anybody believe you? You hated him. It was a terrible accident. Xander loved you. You were the only thing that mattered to him, and now he's burned. Burned to death by your own boyfriend, and you don't even care. Sorry, I'm sorry. I never intended for anybody to get hurt. Maxie, let's go. It's over. Shouldn't you arrest him or something? Maxie, Maxie come down, all right? Alexander was a wanted fugitive, you know that. Nicholas didn't do anything wrong by locking him in there and notifying the authorities. If the fire hadn't broken out, he would be in the PCPD lockup right now. No, no, Xander was innocent. He told me he was. Some, is there somebody we should call? We're staying with Bobby. I'll take her home. Maxie, please, let's go. We should make sure she's okay. Yeah, it, if we say anything else, it'll probably just upset her more. Okay. You, have any, you have any questions for me? No, no, from what you said, there, no crime was committed. Xander was a wanted fugitive. Uh, he attacked you, you tried to defend yourself. He was alive when you left, right? Yeah, he was, he was unconscious, but he was breathing. All right, then case is closed. Xander died accidentally in the fire. No, oh, excuse me. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I know this must be happening. No, no, I, I don't blame you. I just wish it would have turned out differently. You guys look, I mean, no doubt it's terrible yeah, yeah. the way Xander died, but I, I don't see what any of us could have done to save him. Let's go home, okay? I'm just, just, just you know, I'm you're gonna have to wait. Um, we just got the report back from forensics on Xander's body. I need to know what you hit him with before you left the room. back to Bobby's. Oh, go ahead. I'll be fine. I'm not leaving you here. I can't believe Xander's dead. I mean, I wish you could have heard him talk about love and how much Emily hurt him and how much everyone here used him. You didn't. Look, you were trying to help, so Maxie, please stop blaming yourself. What? All you did was help Xander hide in the basement. You didn't start that fire. And it's not your fault that Max hurt and, and that Xander's dead. Look, people make mistakes, Maxie. Terrible things happen, but it's no one's fault. I think that's the way Xander felt, is that one mistake led to another until everything got out of control. But he wasn't a bad person, Georgie. He was so sweet. Maxie, I'm not saying that Xander deserved to die, but he used you. He knew how much trouble you could be getting in. He needed a friend, Georgie, and so did I. I'm sorry, I don't know if you can understand this, but no one is hunting Dylan down right now to arrest him. Your biggest problem is whether or not to admit that you've been in love with him this entire time. <laughs> I didn't use a weapon to hit Xander. Well, that's not what this report indicates. It says Xander was dead before the fire started. A blow to the head with an unspecified blunt object. Yeah, that's not possible. Xander was alive when Nicholas left the room. I rooms. understand that, but there's, there's no... There's no proof of that. I'm sorry. Well, Nicholas Cassidy, you're under arrest. Of course. For the murder of Xander Smith. 